Sleepover vibes again. Yes, I am in my nice little nook. I've got my pillow. I've got my most comfortable clothes on here. I'm ready to settle in and watch a movie, and that is the topic of today's video. Before I get started, though, um, please ignore the massive amount of band-aids on my finger. I have to keep this thing covered up. I broke my finger. Like, I, I really broke my finger pretty severely a few weeks back and have to keep it covered because, um, yeah, life is fun. It's fine. It's it's gonna heal. It's just, you know, I had, I had to get stitches out, so I've got to keep it covered. So like I said, we'll be discussing movies here. I got home from work. I got changed. I'm ready to relax. And I was thinking about what would be a good movie to watch on this fine evening here. Now, a few days back, a movie popped into my head from the early 2010s, like mid 2010s ish. And I was thinking, wow, that was a really underrated horror or thriller movie. And that's something that I find myself thinking about and discussing with people a lot is some of my favorite movies that could fall under the umbrella of horror, or sometimes it's kind of a stretch to call them horror. Some are more of the thriller variety. But I today wanted to go through some of my favorite, favorite, favorite underrated horror movies. Maybe they're not underrated. Maybe some of them have like a, a cool cult following that I'm just not like awesome enough to be a part of. I don't know. This is, of course, just all my opinion. Who knows? So I'm going to start off with some that I guess are, are more of a stretch or kind of cheating here and kind of ramp up to the ones that I think are truly the underrated horror gems that I think people should definitely give a chance to. The first one that I want to recommend definitely isn't scary whatsoever, but it is technically a ghost movie, so I'm allowing myself to put it. It's from the 40s, it is in black and white, and it is called The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. I love this movie, it gives me warm fuzzy feelings, there's nothing scary about it at all, but Rex Harrison, who was famously in the movie musical My Fair Lady, he is in this as Captain Greg, a ghost that is haunting this widow that has moved into a seaside cottage, and he convinces her to literally like ghost write a book for him, and it is just, ugh. It's so fantastic. My mom showed this one to me when I was younger and I just fell in love with it. But I'm putting it out there because no one has ever seen it or talked about it or, or and nobody I know like is into this movie. So I would just like to put the good word out into the world about that one. Um, the Ghost and Mrs. Muir, worth a watch. It has a ghost in it. The next one, again, kind of another cheat because this is from a very famous franchise, but apart from the newer ones from this franchise, the remakes and the first few originals, not a lot of people have actually watched all of the Halloween trilogy or Halloween saga with Michael Myers. And I think that people really need to watch Halloween Four. That one is actually one of my top favorites from the franchise. I think it's kind of overlooked. I think people all of course remember the first one. A lot of people have seen the second one. The third one is notorious for being so bad that it actually kind of loops back around and turns good again, at least in my opinion. Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a plot point of three. But people get hung up on that. People talk about those three and then the newer ones, which are great, but we don't pay enough respect to the fourth one. You got Michael doing his most Michaeliest things. You've got Loomis running around yelling like a madman. Perhaps the Halloween saga is really about like Loomis slowly losing his mind. I don't know. You get introduced to a new and very important character. I know that that the Halloween cinematic universe, things that are, are considered canon and not canon, whichever movies you watch, it's all kind of a big mess, but it's it's fun. But the fourth one is actually really entertaining. I like that one a lot. I would put it top three of all of those. So I think that if you have seen some of them, and even if you don't find the movies scary, it's just kind of iconic. Like, it's an iconic franchise, and I think the fourth one does get overlooked. My next recommendation is, I think, more of a thriller, but this is actually a pretty, pretty wicked thriller here. My mother showed me this one. Why, my mom's showed me, like, most of the movies on this list. That's so funny to think about. I just, this one reminds me so much. Um, when I was younger, my dad used to work out of town a lot and go on business trips, and whenever he was gone, we would always just, like, me and my mom would hang out and just find a movie to watch. So she found this one and saw part of it and made a point to tell me about it. We rented the DVD from the library and went back and watched it together. 
and oh my goodness, we were we were like shaken by this movie. It was so good. Um, it has Robert De Niro in it in a very, very young Dakota Fanning. It's from the early 2000s, so you know, it's 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 a little bit old. I guess we can call it an older movie now. Oh my gosh, that makes me feel old. But after the death of his wife, Robert De Niro and his daughter move to, I believe, upstate New York. I know they move out of the city kind of into like this small, quiet town. And immediately after moving into their new home, his daughter um, begins to talk about an imaginary friend she has made named Charlie. I will not say anything else about this movie. You just have to watch it and let it happen. Oh my goodness. One of my favorites to show people if they've never seen it before. I love watching people see this movie for the first time. I, I need to make new friends, I guess, so I can show more people this movie. But yes, hide and seek. My next recommendation is Wait Until Dark, another older movie, again, another thriller. Maybe I'm cheating by calling all of these horror, but th there are scary elements to them. This movie, I remember reading that when they showed it in the theaters, they darkened the movie theaters beyond what the normal limit of darkness was to make the ending of this movie even more like powerful and even more scary. Um, one of the like probably the best jump scare in movie history in my opinion like the jump scare in this movie I'm not going to spoil it I will tell you there is a jump scare and it's probably like the biggest one the most like notorious one in cinema in my opinion but more of a psychological there psychological thriller there's nothing supernatural in this movie at all it is about um a woman played by Audrey Hepburn who becomes in possession accidentally of this doll that is stuffed with drugs. It ends up in her possession, in her home, which she's able to still navigate as a, a blind woman. And the criminals that are after this doll that is stuffed with drugs are trying to get it back. That's all you need to know for this film. There is, again, a, a fantastic jump scare in it. I think it scared the absolute daylights out of audiences <laughs> when this movie first came out. I remember hearing a little bit about it. There was that um, TV special back um, about, gosh, over 10 years ago now about the greatest horror movie or the scariest movie scenes of all time. And this movie actually made the list and I was pleasantly surprised that it did because it doesn't really fall under the traditional horror genre, but it definitely is worthy of some recognition. All right, up next we have arrived at a proper horror movie. So the next couple that I'm going to talk about really take me back to being in college towards the end of my time in college in the 2010s. Um, on my days that I didn't have class, I had a, a couple of friends that didn't have classes. Like, like Our schedules aligned to where there was like one day a week where we didn't have classes and we would go to the local movie theater that would do five dollar matinee tickets and there were so many horror movies that came out in the early, like I saw all of the ones from like 2010 up through like 2016. We would just like religiously go. I was out of college in, in 2016, but just for a while, like any movie, like no matter how bad I, we would, we would go and see it. Like one of them, I'm not going to officially put this on the list because everyone will laugh at me, but for whatever reason, the Chernobyl Diaries is one that stands out to me from that time. Nobody else that I know that has seen that movie likes it. Why is that one of the movies that has like scared me the most? I don't get really scared by movies. Why that one? I'm never going to go to that place. I know that's not real. That's not a scenario that would ever happen to me, but that one sticks out in my mind. But we, we went and saw all of them, no matter how bad. But this was one of the ones that I actually really, really liked. And I felt like it got kind of overlooked and kind of forgotten. And that is The Woman in Black, the one with Daniel Radcliffe of Harry Potter fame. I think that this is just a great good old fashioned haunted house movie. If you want like a Victorian era spooky house secluded in a marsh, like this movie was really good. Is it the scariest thing I've ever seen? No. Did it have some great scares? Yes. You know, the period costumes, big spooky house, all the fog. It had all the makings of like a great horror movie. It felt 
very akin to classic horror movies. I'm I'm a sucker for like a really obvious set and a couple good fog machines. We don't need any more than that. I don't know why we stopped making movies that way. So this one comforted my soul. But no one talks about this. No one remembers this one. I've shown this movie to people and they're like, yeah, this is pretty good. So why did we just collectively as a society forget about this? I thought it was great. I remember the trailers for this coming out getting me hyped. I didn't want to get too excited or get disappointed, but I really, really liked this one. So if you haven't seen The Woman in Black, definitely give it a shot. Another one from the 2010s. This was one that I think maybe audiences didn't fully get the points of, even though it was pretty straightforward. And that movie is Your Next. This is the movie that popped into my mind a few days ago that kind of inspired me to sit down and make this video and share my recommendations. This one came and went without a whole lot of discussion, at least that I saw, pretty quickly. I remember being in the theater laughing my head off at this movie because it's it's like a black comedy, a dark comedy. And I think that people went into this one expecting just a run-of-the-mill home invasion movie. This one doesn't have anything supernatural in it. It is of the home invasion genre a la The Strangers, but it's a lot better than The Strangers in my opinion. But there's kind of that humorous twist to it. And I remember the audience that my friends and I were sitting in seemed like hesitant to laugh and very confused. I think like the humor of it was just kind of lost on people, but I loved it. And then I, I think about how that movie ended, like the last shot of that movie, and I just want to start applauding. I thought it was great. And this one came out after Cabin in the Woods. So it felt like maybe they were a bit inspired by like subverting expectations the way that Cabin in the Woods did. But Cabin in the Woods blew up and got so famous. Your next kind of flew under the radar. Again, nothing supernatural in it, but I definitely would rank it as like a horror thriller movie. And it's, it's worth a watch. I really am kind of disappointed that we as a society don't really talk about Your Next to the point where for a little while I had forgotten about it until something reminded me of this movie the other day. The next movie I'd like to put out there isn't necessarily my favorite, but and I, I just, I don't know, the ending really didn't do a whole lot for me, but I still want to recommend it, especially to anyone that is a fan of going to haunts or haunted house attractions, especially local haunts, haunts um, in, in different, you know, like local things, not anything big at a theme park. You know, just imagine you and your friends packing up the RV and going on the hunt for the most extreme haunted house you can find. That's the premise of The House's October Built. Now, the thing about this movie is I know that there was a the fiction version that I have seen, but I know that there's a version of this movie that is more of a documentary about a genuine search to find the most extreme haunt in the United States. I haven't been able to find anywhere to access that version. I really want to see the more documentary side as somebody that really, really loves haunts and haunt events. Um, hello, I'm a huge Horror Nights fangirl. I would really like to see that version of it. But as someone that does enjoy those events, I could find the, the horror and the, I guess, humor at times in the premise of this movie. Again, a bunch of people go out in search of this extreme haunt. They've heard rumblings about this underground one that you have to really be in the know to be able to access that's super extreme. And it's done more in a found footage style. So you get a lot of, you know, like the, the, the same premise you see in a lot of found footage horror movies. Um, there's some scenes that are just hilarious to me. I don't know if they're supposed to be intentionally funny. There's an altercation with a, a character that is a clown at one point that my cousins and I used to quote to each other all the time. Again, I didn't really like the ending. I felt like there was potential for a whole lot more in this movie. And in fact, my next recommendation is kind of the same premise of that movie, but done a thousand times better. But again, if you like haunts, if you like horror, watch The Houses October Built. You might be entertained. My last recommendation for this video, again, similar to The Houses October Built, but so much better. I went into this movie expecting something goofy and not scary at all. I watched this movie 
in the daylight and it still scared me. And that movie is Hell House LLC. Last I checked, it is still available on Amazon Prime. If you are a lover of horror or haunted houses, run, do not walk to watch this movie. So good. I wish more people knew about it. It is, again, a found footage movie that I think is actually done pretty well. It is about a group of people that buy this old in old timey hotel that is allegedly haunted and they're going to put on a Halloween event. The movie starts with the opening night of that Halloween event. Everything is running smoothly until it isn't. Sepia its own effect from every true crime documentary. But um, as a person that goes to haunted houses, uh, this actually scared me. The idea of something going wrong inside a haunted house is really terrifying to me. And the footage of people like frantically running out of the haunt at the beginning of this movie, like, I don't know, it, it, like it placed a fear inside of my brain that I don't think I'll ever be able to shake. And of course, this opens up an investigation into what exactly went wrong. And one of the only survivors of the the accident that night, one of the staff members of the haunt event is there to provide tapes that everyone was taking to document the opening of this house and that's how the plot unfolds. You watch their journey into adding in the set pieces and deciding what they're going to do and things start to go amiss. I know it sounds kind of lame. It sounded lame to me when I read about it but this movie actually scared me <laughs> so I would really really recommend it. Um, I, I think it is still on Prime. This is like the one I most highly recommend for fans of horror because I think more people need to see it and give it the appreciation that I feel it deserves. So there you go. There are some of my favorite underrated, underappreciated horror and thriller movies. Perhaps your next horror favorite is hiding somewhere in this list. Maybe I just have terrible taste. I don't care. Taste is subjective. But I think I'm going to settle in here and figure out something nice and spooky to watch.